In today's video, we're going to be creating this popular type of animation that can be seen in music visualizers, lyric videos, or anywhere else that you please to use it. In our default scene, we're going to hit X to delete the cube, and we're going to add in a simple plane. Then we're going to scale the plane by 20 units on just the Y axis by hitting Y and hitting Enter. So this gives the total length of 40 units. So now we're gonna grab it on the Y axis by 20 units so that the base corresponds with the origin. Now we're gonna hit Shift A, Curve, and we're going to add in a circle curve. Then we're gonna rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now in the Curve Data Properties over here, you can change the resolution, which is basically what control will have over the shape, whether you want the shapes to be triangular or you want them to be nice and circular or something in between. The choice is up to you. But in our case, we're going to start off by making it a really high resolution, maybe something like 100, so that we get a very smooth circle. Then in the geometry, we're going to go ahead and increase the bevel depth to something like 0 0.01, so that we get a nice round structure for this. Now, this particular object is going to have an array modifier. So let's go to the modifier properties and add in an array modifier. Change the relative offset from x. We're going to make that 0 and we're going to give z a total distance of 100. And in fact, we're going to have to say minus 100. So in this case, it'll be moved by two units. And in case you want it to be moved by only one unit, then you can go ahead and say minus 50. So now you can just increase the count to, let's say, 41, so that it reaches the absolute end of this strip over here. Now we can go ahead and add in our camera to this center by selecting the camera, hitting Alt-G and Alt-R to clear rotation and location, and then rotating it on the x-axis by 90 degrees, and just grabbing it on the y-axis by one unit in front, and grabbing it on the z-axis by just a little bit. That we'll see in a while. So when we hit zero on our numpad, we can go ahead and adjust the parameters. Now, with our camera selected, we can go to the camera properties and we can change the focal length to whatever you desire. I like a low focal length, so I'm gonna go ahead and place something like 18. Now what we're going to do is we're going to animate these rings going towards the camera. And that's basically all the animation that there's going to be. So let's increase our timeline over here. Go to frame number zero and hit I and hit a location keyframe. Let's change the end frame to 300. Go to frame 300 and just grab it on the y-axis. Make sure you hit control and just choose how many circles you want to go. So every time the number goes up over here by my over here, I mean, you see the top left corner, minus two, minus three, as you move higher, you can create whatever you want. That many circles are passing by. So let's say we can just type in, in fact, minus 12, so that 12 circles pass by, and that determines the speed at which it moves. Then let's hit I, location, and then make sure that you have your cursor in on the timeline over here, hit T, and then change the interpolation to linear. So now when you play it, you can see how it's moving. We can always select our camera, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that you can see only what's going to be rendered out and determine if it's fast or slow enough for your requirements. So once you have this set up, the next thing is we don't want all of it to be seen till the end because when you actually texture this, that area will become a bit too bright. So we wanted to cut off at some region. We're gonna easily create that by hitting Shift A, Mesh, adding a plane, and then just rotating it on the X axis by 90 degrees, and just grabbing it on the Y axis and shifting it back till it cuts off the exact number of circles that you want cut off. So I think somewhere around here is fine. Let's just scale this up like that, and that should be fine. Now let's go ahead and give all of these the textures that they require. So let's go into the rendered view. Over here, there's a light in our scene, the default light. We don't need that, so let's hit X, delete, and the light will be gone. We also don't require our background to be this gray color, so in the world properties, we can go ahead, select the color, and bring it all the way down to black. Then let's select our rings and give them a new material. 
the material is going to be fairly simple we're simply going to increase the emission let's increase the saturation to something like 0.5 and the hue you can honestly make it whatever color you want maybe saturation of 0.6 and now you can make the hue any hue you want let's go ahead and switch off overlays and also switch on blue so let's go to the render properties switch on blue and switch on screen space reflections now let's select this go back to our material property and make sure our base color is set to black and increase this emission strength to something like five so there we go as you can see whatever by changing the hue we can get whichever color we want some sort of apocalyptic red or a nice utopian blue or a sci-fi purple it's up to you based on whatever you're using your situation for for now we're just going to go ahead with this nice blue now the last thing that we have to do is texture the floor so let's select the floor and then click new and go ahead and open the shader editor so we're going to create a new window bring our cursor here click and drag switch the viewport from 3d viewport to the shader editor hit n to remove the side panel and now very simple texture we're going to search for the noise texture we're going to hit Control t with the node wrangler switched on if you don't have node wrangler just add in a mapping and a texture coordinate node then connect the object into the vector and the vector into the vector and then search for a color ramp place the color ramp in right over here connect the color of the noise texture into the factor bring this slider in quite a bit and connect this color into the roughness along with that let's go ahead and increase the metallic to a really high value almost one but not quite one and then since our plane was stretched on the y-axis by a lot we're gonna have to go to the scale in the mapping and just increase that as well so increase that to something that you think is nice so i think 120 because i want the effect to be more or less stretched in the x-axis so i think 120 seems nice and lastly, this black, I don't want it to be completely reflective. So I'm just going to increase this up to a nice gray. I think that looks nice for me. And for these regions also, I will just bring it down by a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And there you go. And now you have your animation. It's perfectly looping animation. Of course, you can go ahead and change the color of these to whatever you want. But before that, Another thing that you can do is you can go to the color management in your render properties and change the look to something like high contrast and also increase the emission strength to something like maybe 10. So all of this is up to your preferences as to how you want it to be. If at all you do want, you can always duplicate your color ramp over here, put this color right in there, change this to a complete black and this to a complete white, then search for the bump node plug the color into the height, reduce the strength a bit initially, and connect the normal into the normal. 0 0.02, I think. And yeah, that'll give it a little bit more character, maybe 0 0.03. So there you go. This is our final animation. I will also change this. I think I like this as well. So it depends on what your use case is. So have fun with this. Create whatever you feel like. I hope you learned something. And until next time, stay creative.